All right, we'll get going. So hi, so my name is Dan Allen. I'm a um, business owner, an open source project lead, and a published author. And while I'm first and foremost a developer, no doubt about that, I have a deep passion for technical writing and documentation tools. So today I'm here to share with you 10 brain hacks that I use to write fluently every day. We'll be looking at how to get the stuff that's stuck up here in your head onto the page, and then, but also how to get stuff up here in the first place. And hopefully this advice will help you solve some of your, your problems writing, perhaps some, you know, getting past some writer's block. So to get the ball rolling, I'll begin with a hack that goes by the same name. So as writers, we know nothing's more dreadful than that right there, the blank screen. I'm sure just staring into that abyss is giving you a little bit of that dread. And that's because we get trapped thinking about what the final product is going to look like and what it's going to take to get there. And we kind of forget about just the first step and how to get started. So with that mindset, to be honest, doing it tomorrow sounds much more appealing than doing it today. But then what's on that screen right now is how much you're going to get done today, tomorrow, the day after that. Yeah, exactly. So forget about finishing. Forget about it. Just think about the single action you can take to get started. In other words, get the ball rolling. You'll find that taking the first step is actually really manageable. And, but now you have momentum on your side. And what's more, you've given your brain permission to work in the background even when you get up to take a break because you're in it. So all you have to do is just let that momentum pull you along. So what you do is you keep thinking what's next, those little tiny steps, and just let the ball march down the lane. So gradually, you know, but eventually, you'll get to the end. And not by taking some huge, uh, gigantic step, but taking these, you know, it's a journey of these little steps along the way. So don't psych yourself out. Focus on what you can do to get the ball rolling. Though one of the challenges with writing is knowing, well, where to start or where to pick up where you left off. So to choose what I'm going to tackle next, what I do is I consult my work log. So what's this? So my work log is a list of tasks, initiatives, um, so forth, that I, that I want to take on. It's nothing formal like an issue tracker or a project plan. It's more like my personal compass. So it, and my sort of safety net. So it provides me hints about what's in my writing backlog so I don't have to uh, start from scratch. So I maintain this in each project that I work on. So when I go into a project, I know there's a work log file there and I left notes to myself from the last time I left this directory and I can come back and be like, where was I? And I don't have to, to dig that up. So, but that gives me the freedom to switch between projects uh, quite fluently because I don't have to worry uh, oh, I'm going to forget that I was trying to, to do something here and I, and I don't want to leave because if I come back, I won't remember. So I just know, okay, I'll just note, note it down. But the other thing is while I'm writing, say an idea pops into my head and it's, it, it's, it's tempting to pull me away from my writing, but I can't continue writing because I'm worried I'm going to forget that. So I just jot it in the work log and I go back and continue writing and I'll just check that later. Now, when I do switch back to the project, uh, to get the ball rolling, what I do is I immediately open that work log and I just, you know, I, I look through and sift through the list, pull a little seedling out of an idea, and I go and replant it. And after I finish each item in the work log, I can check it off or I delete it, and that gives me motivation to really be aggressive about knocking tasks down. I want to see those, I want to see that list pare down. So keep a work log and take the load off your mind, but also so that you always have something to come back to to get your next task. But of course, you know, as I mentioned, if you have a project plan or an issue tracker, you should be updating that, right? So this isn't the official thing. It's more like just your compass. So now let's talk about the actual writing part. Uh, oftentimes, we get blocked trying to figure out how to use the right words. Like, what, how am I going to say what it is that I want to say? I, you know, I, I get the idea of what I want to communicate, but I can't figure out how to put the words together. So we can, start, we can solve this problem by starting off with a question. As a matter of fact, this is how most conversations work. Someone comes up to you and they, they ask you a question. You don't pause for very long before you start answering it. And so we can take advantage of that and use that when we write. What we do is assume someone just asks you a question about what it is that you're about to write. A good example would be, what do I need to install your software? Okay, well, I know the answer to that. I'll just, I'll, um, just turn around and answer it. And right away, we're done. And so now we say, all right, what would they ask me next? Well, how do I run it? Okay, so answer that. So when the narrative isn't coming to you, kind of force a narrative by uh, thinking about what questions people would ask, and then just go ahead and answer them. 
But the other, the other benefit here is it gives you a little bit more insight into your user because you start to think about why they are at your documentation in the first place or, or why they're reading your writing, and so that helps. So stepping back, I find I do some of my best writing when I'm not actually writing. So what's that about? Well, I call this pre-writing. So when you're away from your desk, there's no pressure to actually put something on the page. And it's funny how the brain all of a sudden says, well, now it seems like a good idea to write. Uh, but it's good because you're, you're, you feel the freedom to explore ideas, um, approaches, maybe turns of phrase, and you start to collect these things in the back of your brain. So what I do is I usually venture off with some sort of question in mind to contemplate, and if I get nothing out of it, you know, it's a nice break. Or maybe I go and get something else done. But usually, somewhere along the line, my brain catches on, and it starts to compose some sentences, and it starts to put those, you know, the word play together. And I'm filling up my well. That's what I'm doing. So now, once I start, once I'm on to something compelling, I'm like, oh, I, I, I have something I want to get down. And I have this, this urgency to, to capture it. So I race back to my desk, I skip right past that blank page, and I just start unloading stuff onto it. So when you're stuck, you know, get outside of your current perspective or, you know, outside of your desk, and let your brain just do its thing. Now, we have trouble sometimes getting into the flow when we are back at our desk writing because we're agonizing over those first couple of sentences, the opening, the introduction, maybe even the title. But it may turn out these are wasted words anyway because people are very busy these days and they're probably just coming to your documentation or your writing your article just to get the, the important information out, you know, the meat of it. So when you're thinking about what matters in your writing, it's probably going to be some sort of action. Readers want to get into it, so what you should do is just indulge them. So just like the opening of a 007 film, draw them in with some sort of action. Start out with a very thin draft that's just really all action, all facts, no commentary. And what you're doing is you're riding along the, the main uh, ridge line, if you will, of the main procedure or your main point. And you're, you could say that you're starting from the middle. Don't worry about trying to uh, envelope it. And think about, okay, the users here, let's say they're reading your documentation, what do they have to type? What do they absolutely have to know? Just get those things down on the page. And the, the benefit here is it really keeps the writing moving along because if it's action-based, it's always next, next, next. And you don't end up getting stuck uh, kind of repeating yourself. Come back in, add the details later. Okay, so about those details. So it turns out these bits of action that you've now written down, they are sort of become what I call a content flytrap. So content is sticky. It attracts other content. So when content's on the page, it kind of brings other content into it. It's easy to see what's missing when you read your, what, what you've written so far. And you say, well, I, I left out a step. I need to put that in. Okay, so now you have something to add to it. You're really moving from sort of the inception phase to an editing phase. And so what you're doing is you're, you're, you have a place now to trap all the ideas that are in your mind and then get them down into the page. But I think it's also easier to enlist help because if you have something written, you might be able to have someone help you write it or maybe they, need to, they can review it and they can tell you what, they're, what they see is missing. And since the document already has structure, they're able to write into it or they're able to commentate on it. And so you can divide and conquer your work. So this is a good way to, to get past uh, the isolation of writer's block. Now, if you find your, y the writing process itself to be getting in your way, try to use a lightweight markup language like ASCII doc. So writing in, in an ASCII doc means being able to focus purely on the content. So what I mean by that? Well, aside from a few semantic notations that you can see on the screen, there's no rich text formatting, there's no hidden text, there's no presentation details, and there's no ornate markup to really get in your way and to prevent you from seeing the words that you want to focus on. So really it's just, I mean, I tend to edit mostly just in a plain text editor and it's just the words that I'm writing and there's nothing else and I don't really have to worry about uh, the tool stepping on my, on my writing. But it also gives you space to write notes to yourself. So if you look at this slide to this slide, you'll notice I did what looks like a, co a code comment. So this is interesting because I can now write between the lines. I can leave notes for myself, I can uh, have alternate 
drafts of a sentence, or I can have little reminders. I maybe have an outline of what I'm about to write below it. So I can just put those notes and then I write below it. Yet when you're done, you still get a beautiful result. And that itself is a reward to motivate you to write because you want to produce that nice thing. And so it does it for you. So while we're on the topic of ASCII doc, I want to talk about another technique. Uh, one of the advantages of writing an ASCII doc is that you can ventilate your prose. So this technique has had a profound impact on my writing. So I'll explain. So the typical way of writing is you just let the line soft wrap until you come to the end of a paragraph. So it's really all just one line and it's just being wrapped by the text editor. But this makes the paragraph very crowded and unstructured. Another approach is you could hard wrap the lines at a fixed column width, like you might do with code. But this causes you uh, to waste time reflowing the text. Every time you edit the beginning of the sentence, you have to reflow the whole paragraph because now it, it shifts all the, the words off the end of the line. And it also inflates the diff. So when you look at what changed, it looks like you changed every line instead of just changing the one word. So although we do group sentences together to create paragraphs, each sentence itself really stands on its own. It's a complete thought. And we want to grant it this independence. So the way we do that is we ventilate the prose. So each sentence, it gets its own line. So that's going to look a lot like code. Each statement in code gets its own line. So putting in each, uh, each sentence on its own line makes it easy to break paragraphs apart. So if you look at the screen right now versus now, we can see I can easily just split this paragraph apart. I don't have to go find the sentence in, and, you know, and cut and paste. And you can also reorder sentences, replace them, disable them, or just knock them out entirely. In fact, they look a lot like list items. And if you're in the outlining phase, you just outline by doing bulleted lists. You just remove the bullets, and now you have sentences, now you have a paragraph. You can see how this is transitioning from one stage to the next. And I think in general, it just allows the text to breathe. And that means you're more likely to create, uh, to write content that's easier to read. So you can do things like see run-on sentences, sentences that are way too long, or perhaps sentences that keep starting with it's a, it's a, it's a, or and, 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 right? So you can start to see those patterns. So I use, I use this technique exclusively when I write now, and it absolutely has changed my ability to, you know, to get writing done. Now, once you get to a certain phase in your writing, you aren't quite sure where else to go with it. You, know, you get to that point where you go, I think I'm kind of, I'm not done, and I know it needs more work. I just, you're kind of afraid to touch it. It's kind of become too whole. So what you need to do at this point is you need to take off your writing hat, and you need to put on the hat of your reader and start to get into, the, you know, into their mindset. But you can't do this by just looking at the, the editor screen, you know, the same, uh, sitting in the same chair. Because your brain just won't make the switch. It's still in editing mode. So what you, the trick that I use is I first publish a preview of my writing somewhere, so on a, you know, on a private uh, URL or something. And then that commits me to a draft. Okay, I'm going to review this version of the doc. And then I pull it up on my phone, I get vertical on a couch, and I just start reading through it. So this works for a couple of reasons. Um, I'm, I'm in the reader's shoes, and this is why it works. So first, I can imagine being like seeing this for the very first time. I have a completely fresh perspective of the writing I just did, and I can look for things like, do I like it? Uh, does it flow? Is it interesting? Is it, is it captivating me? Um, and you'd be surprised. It kind of feels like you're not reading your own writing in this, in this mindset. Am I making assumptions or am I glossing over stuff? But the second thing has to do actually with the screen size. It's important that it's on a phone because it's smaller and more intimate, and there's not any of the noise around you. So under this microscope, errors just jump right off the page, like stick out like a sore thumb. I can find extra words or, or missing words in a sentence much easier in this mode. I'm like, how did I not see this before? I mean, I was reading it, you know, over and over as I was writing. But you miss it. Now, the, another thing starts to happen, though. You, you'll, you'll find that you start rewriting the sentences as, as you're reading them. Just as you're reading someone else's article, you're like, mm, that's kind of an awkward sentence. I wouldn't have written it that way. But you do the same thing with your own writing. So it's actually a kind of a lot like that pre-writing I was talking about before. Your brain is composing while it's not at the keyboard typing. 
So once I've gone through the document as far as I want to, you know, I head back to my desk and I start hacking and slashing, but now I've got this confidence of I know exactly what I want the doc to be and I don't have any problem just deleting that sentence and rewriting it. So we were overly protected before of our writing and now we are much looser about it. So to my final piece of advice, it comes from a fellow speaker, writer, and creative, Denise Jacobs. So she's a really strong advocate for uh, creativity by banishing your inner critic. As a matter of fact, she wrote a book about it, which I recommend checking out. So she posits that a lot of the problems we face in writing stem from getting in our own way. You know, we're worrying that it has to be perfect or that this is the only chance we're ever going to get to write it. So we only have one shot. And you don't want to let that stuff to sink in. So find your own voice, don't try to write like someone else, and just, just write, you know, and recognize how lucky you are to be able to, you know, move words and sentences around without having to get out a whole new sheet of paper and start re writing it again by hand, or in the really old days when you have to white out and then do typewriter over top of it. I mean, you, you can morph this thing any way you want, so feel like... Mistakes are cheap and you can make them or sentence. Let me just throw a sentence out there I'm, I'm not afraid to put it down on the page because I can delete it So uh, just have a lot of play and then Realize too that time will fix those problems time is such an important ingredient in the creative process So give yourself plenty of it. Don't pressure yourself So speaking of time I'm afraid we're now out of it, but uh, we'll go over what uh, the brain hacks that I shared today and then we'll get wrapped up. So get the ball rolling. Uh, consult your work log to figure out what's next. Answer a question if you get stuck. Uh, get out and pre-write if you can't get something on the page. Uh, jump right into the action. Uh, cut the, cut the uh, excess commentary. Uh, remember that content attracts content, so just getting something down on the page might actually be a key to getting more. Uh, write freely in ASCII doc, ventilate your prose. Um, when, you're, when you get to the point where you don't know what else to do, couch read your draft and banish your inner critic from preventing you from getting in your own way. So hopefully these techniques will help you in your own writing. You know, take some of them, take all of them, blend them, blend them up, you know, whatever combination works for you. But most important, no matter what you do, just remember this, get the ball rolling. Don't let that white page stare you down. Thank you for your time and best of luck in your writing.